So look, WWDC just ended, and honestly, I think this is the best one we've seen in years. What do you think, Dan? <laughs> so you've probably seen a bunch of videos already breaking down everything. Let me tell you what the top things that were announced today and what actually matters to me, since you're watching my video. So let's start with the new OS naming. It's now called OS 26, and going forward, Apple's gonna be naming them like car models based on the year. So next year, it'll be OS 27. And so the biggest change has to be design. And it's actually a huge change, kind of like what we saw with iOS 7 when everything changed. Well, iOS 26, everything's changing once again. So Apple's calling it liquid glass, and it pulls an inspiration directly from Vision Pro. It's like floating UI elements, soft glass like visuals, and translucent bubble look. Even the dock at the bottom now hovers over your content and blends in with whatever is actually beneath it. It's sleek, and more importantly, it's unified. So whether you're on an iPhone, an iPad, tvOS, whatever device you're on, it's going to have a similar look, and it's gonna feel cohesive for the first time in a very long time. Now, these next features that are pretty big to me are not that sexy, but they matter a lot, and I feel like Apple took the features out of Google and Samsung's playbook, and I am mad at that. Call screening is here, so when a random number calls you, it will ask them to state their name and why they're calling. Then you can decide if you wanna pick it up. And then we also have Hold Assistant, which is another feature that I love to use on a different device. And Hold Assistant is really great. You call a number, they put you on hold, and when they pick it up, you then get notified to grab your phone, so you don't have to wait on hold the whole time. It's not sexy, but it's very simple and it makes things a whole lot better. And so now there's a lot of new features with the live translation. So for example, if you're on a FaceTime call with someone who's speaking a different language, it would then bring it back into your language dubbed over their voice. And the same thing is actually with phone calls too. So if you're calling someone who's speaking a different language, it will then come through back in your native language. Makes communication a whole lot easier. Also it does it for text messages too. So if someone texts you something in Spanish, it will put it in English for you automatically. Just simple things that happen in the background to make using the phone easier. So now we have to talk about the iPad. And the iPad, in my opinion, this is the biggest change and the thing that people have been asking for for so long. This update finally turned your iPad into almost a real laptop replacement. You can now open multiple app windows, move and resize them however you want. And the system also remembers those sizes, so when you relaunch the apps, they open in the exact same way again. There's also background processing, so that means if you're doing something big like rendering a video, it will then automatically do that in the background so you don't have to have that app open and make sure the screen doesn't time out, which can be a nightmare sometimes. There's also a brand new Files app, which has more desktop-like features and files with moving folders and renaming folders and you know doing different colors. It's just, guys, I'm super pumped about it. And every year I say I'm gonna use my iPad more, but I truly think this is the year I'm gonna use my iPad a whole lot more because now it acts like a laptop. As you guys know, I have Apple Vision Pro, and so every Vision OS update that comes out, I, I try it out on my device and I still am not using it as much as I want. So maybe this big update is going to help me do that. So they added quite a few things. So now you can add widgets into your space like clocks, photos, and notes. So think about like a virtual office that you now have widgets wherever you're at in your, in your actual space. And even when you turn it off and turn it back on, they're still there. It's absolutely wild to see. And there's also a new persona update that will grab in more information of your face and make it a little bit more realistic because Dan, the guy on the camera, his persona does not look great and hopefully it's gonna look a whole lot better with this update. I cannot wait to try it out and I'll let you guys know if it looks any better or not. It may sound silly, but if you and your friend have Apple Vision Pros, you, you guys can sit next to each other and sync up and watch content together in the same space. I know it's silly, but it's more so, I think, like showing the possibility of Apple Vision Pro. Not really like a use case, but if you have a friend with Apple Vision Pro or you buy one for your guests, you can now sync up and watch content together. And I do think this actually goes down to gaming as well. If you guys are playing certain games, you can play them together in the same space, which I think is going to be pretty cool. Now, speaking of gaming, it now supports the PlayStation VR controllers, which I think is going to open up the possibility for gaming using your Apple Vision Pro. Now, Apple Vision Pro still is heavier than MetaQuest. Uh, you still have a battery pack kind of hanging off, so I wouldn't call it a gaming device. But for people who's trying to get more functionality out their headsets, being able to add games, I'm thinking about like, more precise movement like a Fruit Ninja game, but now you're more precise because you're holding a controller. Yeah, I think it's a win. Anyways, guys, those were my top things that matters to me 
for WWDC. I want to know what you guys think. What, what are your big takeaways? Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja. Hope you guys follow me for more, and uh, we'll talk later. Peace. <laughs>